So how do you make a piece of felted fabric? It's really pretty simple. Start with a Ziploc bag and add a couple of pumps of soap to the bag. Once you've got your soap in the bag, and it doesn't have to be pump soap, it could be any kind of soap, just a little bit will do. Add a little bit of water. I like to eyeball it. One third cup would probably do you plenty. After you've got that, zip the bag closed, massage it a little bit to mix it all up. Next up, get your roving. I like to mix up the colors of roving so that when I am creating this fabric, it's not just a solid color, but kind of like a marbled look. So get plenty of different colors and take all of the roving and shove it into one corner of the bag. It's important to pack it in there tightly and add more water if needed. Zip the bag back closed, press on it for about five minutes, and then massage it really hard for the next five. Take it out and voila, you've got a piece of fabric. So what to do with this amazing piece of fabric now that you've created it? Let's make some succulents. Start by cutting out some shapes that you think would work for leaves. Don't worry about the fibers unraveling because felted fibers won't unravel. Go ahead and cut out a ton and do not waste any of that precious fabric. Because let's face it, it was no fun making that felted piece of fabric. Once you've got that done... Go ahead and overlap the shapes and start needle felting them. You'll need to needle felt a little bit on the front and the back to make sure that they're well attached. That's right, stab the living daylights out of it, front and back. And here's the interesting thing. When you stab the back side, don't stab it as much because you don't want the fibers to start showing through. So only do it a little bit when you do the back side. Then just start adding more and more pieces until you feel like your succulent is complete. You can't go wrong. And don't forget to kind of flip it over and bring the fibers in a little bit. That'll help the leaves kind of puff up to finish your succulent. Now let's talk about how to make other types of cacti. So for this one, what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and make a ton of different, we'll call them petals for the cacti, even though I knew that's not the right name. Obviously, this is why I don't grow them. So I just grabbed a bunch of roving, and instead of using it in the bag, I went ahead and I'm needle felting a little bit on the front, and I flip it over and do it on the back. That's right, I'm doing it front, back, flip, front, back, flip, bringing in the sides, making it even more felted as I'm going along. And did you notice that I was picking up the other part of the cacti just to kind of see how it would look when it was finished. When I'm ready to attach, I'm going to continue needle felting. Let me show you. So I just overlap the two shapes and start needle felting again, both front and back. And when you do that back side, you don't have to push all the way through because you don't want all that fuzziness to show on the front. It really helped me to use the edge of my cushion because that made it so that I could continue to make the cacti more three-dimensional instead of just flat. So here I am just stabbing the front and the back. When I do the back side, I don't have to press as hard. Now, what about all those little bitty nuts? Well, let me show you in warp speed. This part's a little bit time consuming, but you really are just rolling a bunch of tiny pieces of felt and needle felting them. Now let's talk about our last succulent. So this one was made the exact same way as the previous one. This time I was trying to combine a couple of different colors. So I really pulled the roving and overlapped it several times before I commenced stabbing it. But I had to make a, a bunch of different of these petals. So here I am doing the front and the back the front and the back until I had a ton. This is time consuming, but not hard. So just go ahead and put your favorite show on Netflix and stab away. Just watch out for those fingers. Once you've got a bunch, then you can start kind of laying out your composition and start stabbing away again, front and back. And I put the bigger petals at the back side, and then I started putting the smaller ones in the front. I have to tell you that creating Needle felted cacti is completely addicting. Once you start, you'll have a hard time stopping, especially since these guys are going to stay beautiful and green forever. I can't kill them, which is really a good thing. Have so much fun making your own felted cacti and succulents garden. Enjoy.